A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. What are some of the issues and challenges facing the national religious world today? There are, of course, uh, many issues and challenges, but let us here concentrate on one or two points. The first point uh, that I wish to refer to is the fact that true Torah uh, study, research, and education requires funding. This is a simple, straightforward fact of life. The Torah world of the, of the non-Haredi world I'm referring to here, because the Haredi world understands uh, very well what it must do, and it does do what it needs to do to perpetuate itself. But I fear that the non-Haredi world and the religious world of the Jewish people does not fully understand this point. I remember seeing in a book uh, titled A Prophet in Our Times a uh, biography of uh, Rabbi Emanuel uh, Jacobowitz, uh, once the uh, chief rabbi of the British Commonwealth. Uh, I saw there once a, a speech, a, a transcript of a speech that he gave many, many decades ago, in which he made this point to the uh, audience to which he was speaking. He said, we need, in order to galvanize our Jewish communities and to strengthen them and to give them direction, etc., in order to uh, break and bring an end to the uh, reality of uh, intermarriage, etc., we need to strengthen Jewish education. And Jewish education costs money. Jewish schools and uh, yeshivot, ulpanot, and yeshivot gvohot, etc., of all kinds, uh, yeshivot hezder, yeshivot gvohot, mechinot, whatever the Torah institution that one has in mind, all these things require money. It is a very simple and uh, basic fact of life. I heard recently a certain uh, Rosh Yeshiva, a certain rabbi here in Yerushalayim, speaking about this issue, and he related how he ran into a friend of his, a person who had studied in one of the uh, top uh, yeshivot has there in the country in the past, a person he knew well, and this particular rabbi has a fund to help um, uh, to provide for uh, the families and the avrechim, the uh, students, married students, Uh, to allow them to continue their studies for a good number of years after they get married in order to become true Tamidah Chachamim before they go out and and serve the the community at large. And he asked this person for a donation. And this person said, no, uh, I I support the uh, kolel of Hasidut Bells. And this rabbi, who is a non-Haredi rabbi, uh, was taken aback and in fact quite angry and he said why is it in your view that uh, the this is a study of Torah that goes on in, in the Kolel of Bells is more important or more worthy than the study of Torah that goes on in our yeshivot and the yeshivot in which you yourself learned. Why for example should a young man who went to a particular mechina shall we say uh, for a year or two before then serving in the army, perhaps in an elite unit, as many of them do, uh, for three years, and then wishes to return to the yeshiva to study for perhaps a year, perhaps two years, perhaps ten years. Uh, Why is that less significant? Why is that Torah less important and less deserving of your support than the Koran and Bells? It doesn't make any sense that we should support the the non uh, the rather the non Haredi world should support the Haredi institutions, but not support their own. We all know, of course, what the reaction would be if a person collecting for a non Haredi yeshiva were to go to a Haredi neighborhood and ask for a donation. We know exactly how much money he would receive, and therefore this kind of non reciprocity, this uh, non this lack of a two way street 
means that we have to uh, look to ourselves and we have to think of our own institutions first. And the, literally, the poor of your own city come first. And in, in this case, the poor or the requirements of our own communities and our own uh, world outlook and that which we are trying to achieve in this world and, and hand down to our children and grandchildren, that is, uh, is our first responsibility. And this is something that has to be stressed because unfortunately the Datilumi world does not sufficiently understand the, not all people shall we say in the Datilumi world, sufficiently understand the need uh, and, the, and the obligation to support Torah institutions. They don't fully understand that in order to have a healthy, a vibrant, uh, Torah-oriented, non-Haredi uh, world outlook and Torah world and uh, communities that function in this fashion, that live uh, according to such ideals, in order for, for this to exist and to flourish, there have to be institutions of Torah that form the spiritual backbone of, of these communities, of this, of this world outlook. And that is, that is the first point. Is there another point that the rabbi wishes to mention? Yes, the Pasuk states, Be'en hazon ipara'am, which roughly means without there being a vision, uh, without those who give vision and direction to the people, the people are, are essentially lost and without direction, without uh, a clear idea of where they're supposed to be going. The purpose of Torah institutions, teaching Torah, disseminating Torah, is to give the Jewish people a true and correct uh, direction and purpose in life. The problem is that if we look at the Haredi world uh, compared to the Tilumi world, we see there a, a system a system that is in place, that has been in place for many, many generations because it is essentially the uh, system that was in place in the Galuth for many generations and it was perfected and refined over time. And many people uh, looking objectively at these two realities, these two groups in the religious world today would uh, be moved to, th to uh, state, if they were to be honest, even I think many people within the Datilumi world would, would uh, if they were to be honest, would admit to this, that the, the uh, Haredi view, the Haredi system, in terms of a, a world outlook, in, in terms of a way of life, in terms of what kind of Torah is taught, what are the points uh, on which one puts emphasis when it comes to uh, children's education, the education of young adults, what the yeshivot teach, how they teach, etc. If you look at the system that is in place in the Haredi world, uh, many people would say that system is, is more authentic and more real than the system of the non-Haredi Torah world. And, and there is some truth to this statement. And the reason for, for this feeling, for this perception, is that the Haredi system is an expression and it is in fact the quintessence of the, of what I refer to as Galut mode Judaism. This system, as I say, was perfected and refined over a long period of time, and therefore, if, if one wants that kind of Judaism, then the Haredim are the experts, and uh, no one is going to take that away from them. The experts in how to be a Galut Jew is, are the Haredi Rabbanim, the Haredi Gedolim. They know how this system works better than, better than anybody else. If that's not what we want, if we are looking for something else, if we believe that there is something greater, deeper, more profound, more majestic, and more true than that uh, form of Judaism, then Galut mode Judaism. If we want Geula mode Judaism, then we have to produce the vision, the ideas, the direction, and the type of Torah and Halakha that uh, would allow for such a Torah world view and way of life to flourish and spread and prove its superiority here in Eretz Israel, and for that matter, all over the world where Jews are to be found, Jews who believe in Torah, Jews who wish to be uh, authentic Torah Jews, but do not find themselves drawn to and do not feel satisfied with the Haredi perspective. That kind of vision, unfortunately, even with all the Torah institutions that the Dati Lumi world has today, is still very much lacking, but it has to be, and it will be, Hashem, 
be produced and be disseminated. So to sum up, yes, the, the uh, non-Haredi religious world needs to understand more fully and uh, internalize the, the need for, for uh, true, uh, authentic Torah institutions in order to perpetuate itself, in order to strengthen itself, in order to give itself uh, a backbone with which it requires to continue to exist. But more than that, the, the, the non-Haredi uh, world needs to understand that our institutions should not be more of the same, not, should not be uh, the type of institutions that the Haredim, have, the Haredim have so many of and do so well with, with a kippah sugar in, instead of a black hat. That is not what we need. We need uh, true Torah Eretz Yisrael institutions with a different view and a much greater, more powerful, more profound, and more uh, authentic message. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael, or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement. Please email us at office at machonchilo.org.